You're listening to the Two Guys and One Gun podcast here at Guns.com. What's happening, y'all? This is Alexander with Guns.com, and we are here with the Two Guys, One Gun podcast brought to you by Guns.com. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Chris Eager, and today we're going to talk about the, uh, the AK, the infamous rifle, the rival to the M16, the Soviet-stamped, sexy, I can't think of any other S-words, but uh, iconic firearm, maybe one of the most mass-produced firearms in the history of the world. Uh, it's definitely up there in the, in the top five. Uh, incredible operating system, and there's a really cool history behind it. So let's dig into the Avdomat Kalishnikov 47. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, and, and like the AK-47, it's it's like a, it's it's gone beyond being just a a, a rifle to being like a a brand. I mean, they make AK-47 vodka. You you go into like a a, a legal head shop, you know, and they're all like, you know, AK-47 bud is like the bit, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's everything. You see T-shirts. It's like, you know, it's it's almost like. You know how Glock has gone way past being a, a handgun company to being like a social deal. And you hear, you know, you know, I got my Glock and my Rari and all that, you know, and, and everywhere. The, the AK is the, the same way, you know. Um, I mean, you know, as the, the warrior, you know, poet Ice Cube said, you know, I mean. If the day <laughs> does not require an AK, it is good. Right. But I disagree with that because AKs are freaking awesome um but, uh, and, and you said you know it was the the bane of the the m16 but i mean honestly before that it was in the field way before the m16 yeah. was the I mean, if, fal if really, and g3 really rival yeah ex exactly i mean it, it got it got some play in like indonesia against the brits and like the the late uh the, the 50s and stuff you know so technically um, it got some play in korea he could make an argument that it was uh you know, against the uh, the old M1 Garand and M1 Carbine at one point, kind of. I mean, it wasn't like fielding. Yeah. I mean, you know, you had some some Type Ones floating around. You know, uh, you know, kind of in that that time frame. You know, uh, so it's it's an interesting. I mean, we wrote I wrote an article uh, on the site about like the the uh, CIA's first uh, intel briefing on the uh, uh, AK-47, and it's it was a little wildly off, but. Uh, you know, they they eventually you know started falling into their hands all over the world. You know, the the, the Dutch had some, the uh, the Brits found some. You know, I mean, you know, the, the uh, conflict uh, in the the Middle East, uh, you know, between the Israelis and basically everybody, you know, wound up coughing up several. You know, so it was a very very popular gun. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, it came out of almost nowhere. You know, I mean, the the weapons development programs that the Soviets had going on in World War Two, you know, they they were going in a thousand different directions at once. They really were. You know, if you look at like all the the early prototypes and everything, I mean, Kalashnikov had several different prototypes before he finally came up with something that you know was was the group think behind what became the AK forty seven. You know, and uh, of course. The some of the groundwork had already been done. The cartridge already existed. You know, it had been used in the SKS, and you know, the SKS was fielded in the final days of uh, World War II. You know, it was the the SKS forty five. You know, which you know, in nineteen forty five, and uh, it was you know, if you look at all the import marks and stuff on those uh, Russian SKSs, you see a lot of fifty twos and fifty threes and stuff like that. So they were still in you know standard all-out production you know in, into the mid 50s on those when you look at the the nomenclature on the ak-47 and you're like well shouldn't the ak-47 have been like the the king by 1953 well i mean it wasn't and then you know you had the akm and you know all the redesigns and stuff you know yeah but... so let's 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 go back to the beginning a little bit here and really you know when we talk about the the start of the ak in a lot of ways you could make the argument that the ak was the first really mass produced, mass issued rifle uh, in a lot of ways, I think that set somewhat of the standard for your your modern, you know, at the time assault rifle, which we've talked about before. That's a real thing, select fire, intermediate cartridge. 
Um, well, but fairly enough, though, the Germans cranked out hundreds well, of thousands of STG 44s and stuff, you know. That's so. fair, but that was a pretty short, you know, you know, you basically have like, what, a year and a half, two years of production on that. So yeah. it wasn't made in, in mass quantities. And, you know, a lot of people uh, equate, well, you know, the AK is just the, uh, millions, the Russian. Million served. Yeah, the Russian copy of the STG 44, which is not exactly true. Um, the the actual like kind of <clears throat> idea that Mikhail Kalashnikov was looking at was he liked the concept of the STG 44 small intermediate cartridge de detachable box magazine you know great idea but the actual operating system more closely falls in line with the M1 Garand which is another firearm that Mikhail Kalashnikov really liked with the long stroke gas piston um, and that's the operating system that he decided to go with whereas the STG44 is is delay roller uh, <clears throat> you know delay roller lock which is what you would see go on with the G3 um, and when the rifle kind of came into its first development, you know, like you were saying, there were there were the Type 1s, and you're competing against the SKS, which had been adopted. Now, AK-47, 1947, the AK wouldn't really see the, you know, fielded service that it would see until really the mid-50s, when it, when it really hit mass production, and, you know, once you got the AK-47, the OGs were stand, or uh, milled receivers, and then finally went back and kind of revisited the, the AK and were like, man, we could make this so much cheaper for production. And the AKM was born, which stands for, excuse my pronunciation, Avdomat Kalashnikov, Modernizisnyet, which means the modernized automatic AK. And that was, that's what you see today. You know, like a lot of people will equate AK-47 uh, kind of in a similar way that people would say maybe M16. Uh, you know, it's it's a specific model that AK-47 really kind of applies mostly to the to the milled guns um, when you For see sure. the stamp. It's so easy to spurge out on all the different. Oh, yeah. AK variants and the same thing with, you know, the AR variants, the M16, M4 variants, all that. You know, because it, it and it really did. You know, it, it, it's it's almost humorous because everybody's like, "Oh, that's that's AK forty seven But in actuality, there were very few AK forty seven yeah. compared to the later AKMs, AK seventy yeah. fours, AKMSs. You know, all that stuff. You know, so and and that was another thing too that I think the platform was. Uh, there were so many different variants kind of early on um, that, that you would see kind of spawn up not just out of the soviet union with the ak you know ms um or some of the different you know folding mechanisms that they would have for for different stocks but you have all these com block countries that are making their own ak's oh right? yeah they and, shared that technical data package with, oh yeah with everybody that had a hammer and a sickle on their flag <laughs> you know and what i think was neat about that is you know you know they all got the same set of plans and and dies and the same you know, 10 guys show up to be like, this is how we make AK, you know, but sooner or later, within just a couple of months of those guys leaving, they started like changing the franchise around, you know, oh, yeah. it's like McDonald's selling spaghetti now, you know, For sure. it's like in that, that movie, The Creator, you know, where the uh, Michael Keaton's going around and he's looking at the first McDonald's franchises and like, oh, we got potato salad here, it's like, no, you <laughs> yeah. potato salad, it's not McDonald's, uh, 100%. You know? but, yeah, the same thing happened to the AKs, you know, I mean, like the, the, the Chinese AKs, the spikers, you know, the, the bayonets totally different, you know, the woods totally different, the dimensions are a little different, you know, don't even get me started on the Yugoslav, yeah, like, the that's Yugo. the, like type 72s and all that stuff, you know, type 70, I'm sorry, my, uh, M70s, you know, uh, PAPs, Z PAPs and everything, um, then the, the Germans, you know, the MPIs, those things are beautiful, yeah. You know, everybody had their own thing. Those Hungarian AMDs, uh, the Romanians, you know, it's, it's, it was just the Tantals, you know, the Egyptians, you know, and there's just the so body. many different variants and everybody had it in production. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of this big group think, you know, where it's like, well, it's all kind of an AK, but, you know, we, we do it a little different here. You know, yeah, we, for we sure. like our, our foregrips to, to, be, to come out like, a, a dongle you know yeah, the, the old donkey dong yeah you know yeah. i mean it's it's we we like to have like studded serrations on this we like to have cheese grater that we like to you know it's 
it's all and I, and I just think the variations are super neat. You can really oh, you can we could talk forever about just the variations between country totally and country. Out, you know, yeah, and I, I think that's a big deal with uh, American AK fans. You know, because you can basically take an AK um, build. You know, and that's possible these days. It was for a long, long time that it wasn't possible at all. You know, and you can take an AK build and kind of uh, DIY it up and change whatever you want out. You can put different wood on it. You can, I mean, of course, you're going to have to modify some stuff to get it to work. But you go to those like Kalash bashes and stuff, and you see just some wild combinations. You know, this guy's got Hungarian this and Romanian that. And, you know, what kind of barrel, what are you, what is that thing on the end of the gun? What are you doing, man? You know, but, and and you can't really argue, say, well, that never happened because, I mean, gosh, you, you go to like African countries and, and uh, you know, parts of Asia and stuff where they just had all these mixed matches of guns come in and you see crazy stuff like that. I mean, we've, we've done articles on the site where like, uh, all the time uh, in uh, South African poachers are, are caught, you know, in like Namibia, you know, Angola and stuff like that. And it's, you know, going after uh, elephants and, and whatnot, trying for for ivory. And they have just these wild AKs, I mean, AKs with no dust cover on it, rusted and pitted out, no wood left. You know, it was like hidden in a termite mound for 10 years, you know, and it, it's, it's just no wood on it, but it still works. You know, it just it shouldn't, but it does. You know, and I've seen videos where you, you can take the dust cover off, take the the spring out, and and wrap it around like the uh, uh, the the sling uh, portion, and it will still fire like that. You know, just bonkers stuff. You know, it, it's just a uh, it shouldn't exist. Should kind exist. Of yeah. You know, no, I, I mean, the stuff that you can do to it and still make it run is, is just amazing, which blows my mind because uh, here in America, we can't make one from scratch. Yeah, right, 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 right. So before <laughs> right, I get into that. In perfect condition. <laughs> before I get into that, you know, real quick, you know, you were talking about some of the, the articles that you've written. We here at guns.com have a huge section of our company that's dedicated to bringing you all of the latest and greatest news when it comes to firearms. You can stay up to date, see all those cool, crazy AKs. When we say see crazy things, we try to report on it. So uh, be sure to go to guns.com backslash news, and uh, you can stay up to date with everything that's changing, going on, being released in the gun industry. Um, Yeah, you know, that's a really good point. It's funny because starting this podcast out we're like man the soviets just freaking scratched this stuff down with a crayon and a napkin and handed it out to every you know iron curtain soviet block nation and they're out here pumping not only pumping out ak's but pumping out ak's with you know personal modifications and to this day you know like polish ak's are some of the best ak's out there right like even people have finally come around on romanian ak's and in the wazers uh, and, and obviously Serbian AKs and, and uh, Yugoslavian made AKs have been popular for forever. And then there's the United States. And it took us so, so, so long to like just get basic competence on the on the platform. And <clears throat> I think some of it does kind of go back to, I don't know, like it, it must have something to do with the just robust nature of the platform. The, the tolerances are extremely loose. You know, the, the firearm is – it's, it's, it's insane. And you think about, you know, you could 10 years ago be fighting in Kunar province against people who have AKs that were built in the 1960s shooting corrosive ammunition probably since the 1960s and not really being cleaned or maintained and the guns are still slinging lead you know at at lethal velocities reliably for the most part you know and i mean it is not you know i i do think that there's somewhat of a i'm not going to say a misconception it is a very reliable gun but it, it does jam up you know there's there's a lot of of places for dirt and things to ingress into the system. So there is a little bit of maintenance that has to go to it. But I mean, that AK was really made to like the lowest IQ soldier, right? Like anybody should be able to pick this up, operate it, keep it moderately clean enough where the firearm's going to work. 
Um, thousands and, and thousands of child soldiers in Southeast Asia and yeah. West Africa would agree with you on that. You and, know? you know, you're talking about, like, the just the iconic nature of the platform. There's a video out there I want to say – our buddy over at Forgotten Weapons, Ian, talks about the the Kyber Pass gunsmithing. Uh, there's a video out there of somebody who took like an infield and modified it to accept Bren magazines, but aesthetically built it out to look like an AK. So it's like you have this bolt action AK looking thing that shoots 303 British just because of the iconic nature of the, of the platform, right? And going on with kind of the you know the the platform did go through a modernization or a modern yeah modernization uh with some of the manufacturing practices later on when the AK74 came out there was even more they kind of went into it but but early on some of the concepts that like we're just kind of now getting around to for example you know within the past probably within the past 15 years in, in some service, but in, in actual adopted service, the United States military is finally kind of coming around on polymer magazines. Well, right. the Russians were, were running around with these, uh, these bake lights way, way back in the day. And, um, you know, it's not wood, it's plastic. Uh, they also have the, the plum ones, which are pretty cool. And they're, they're kind of collectible now, but, um, it's crazy to think some of the concepts that the AK pushed early on that, again, we're just kind of now coming around to that you can really attest or, or attach to the AK. You know, we had that conversation about is the MP5 obsolete and talked a little bit about pistol caliber carbines. And we both kind of came to the realization that, you know, especially with where SOCOM's going and everything, the idea now is let's have a really small rifle platform. It's so much more effective than a pistol. The Russians had that idea back when the AK 74U came out. You know, like a lot of these AK concepts, the the Marine Corps is now running around with uh, what's the M27 IARs, right? And the idea was that the IAR was going to replace the support weapon. So we're going to get away from belt fed, you know, intermediate cartridge belt fed rifles to have these magazine fed rifles. Well, the Russians had that. You, you know, with the, with the RPK and the RPD, like a long, long time ago. And it's, it's just crazy that there's a lot of concepts that they had with a very crude platform, a very, you know, it's not a precision platform um, like we would consider maybe the, the AR to be, depending on who makes it um, or who puts it together in their basement. Uh, you know, all these a AR builders out there, I'll put the lower I, I and the upper this. together and I clicked them together and I built the whole thing. Yeah, but uh, that's a whole nother podcast episode for later. Um, it's just, it's to me, it's, in, it's incredible. You know, the AK, uh, since the 1950s, has probably touched darn near every single battlefield on the face of, of the planet, you know, uh, pretty much every single continent. I'm sure there's even some AKs that have made their way down to Antarctica at some point or another. Um, you know, like the, it's and, just, and you know, with, with all the Russians on the space station, if you told me there was an AK hiding out <laughs> in pieces on the space station, just ready to be put together, put together, just, yeah, 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 I wouldn't be like, no, no, they did, you know, didn't the, totally, the Russians totally buy that. The Russians had the space gun, didn't they? Like, that was yeah, a they thing. had several different space, yeah, guns. they yeah. put a so, whole space station in uh space that was a gun, there was a gun, know? yeah. Yeah, so again, you know, it's incredible to to really get into the robust, you know, it, it just it, the AK won't die. And you look at, you know, even the platform today, obviously the the AR15 is still around, still kind of running strong, um but so is the AK. You know, I mean, you've got even the Russian Alpha units while they might be running with EOTex and and things like that now, you know, uh, they're still running with AK-105s, those Alpha AK builds. You know, they're, they're still uh, very relevant. Now, we're going to have to do a different podcast on the 74 and 545 because it's one of my favorite things. And I can talk and ad nauseum about that. Ammo? Uh, well, I've got – I've got – I'm not worried about the ammo. Uh, I don't – It's I don't shoot it a lot right now. But, uh, yeah, and, <clears throat> you know, the – the 762 by 39 caliber is also a really incredible kind of intermediate cartridge very effective um 
we could talk a little bit about, you know, there's there's a myth that the AK is an extremely inaccurate platform. It's it's a myth. It really is. Uh, the AK I, is. I think Robski's kind of busted that. Yeah, busted that up. for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can make the argument, well, it probably doesn't have the distance and, and it might not have as tight of an MOA window as maybe some ARs. And, again, it really depends on the AR. You can get some well, real sure, real lemons out there that aren't, aren't shooting 100%. real good. But um, when you have that 30 caliber round, Within a, an effective combat distance, which should really be within 300 yards, it's, it's pretty solid cartridge. You know, it's it's very effective at what it does, um, and, and there's a but lot you know, of benefit. Not, not to, to throw rocks at giants or anything, but if you look at, at just about any, you know, uh, quote-unquote, like, war baby gun, like the uh, M1 Carbine, the M1 Garand, uh, your, your 98 Mausers that weren't made for some sort of safari or something, uh, the vast majority of them are more like two to three MOA rifles yeah. than they are one MOA rifle. One hundred percent. Because it's just so many, so many tolerances that can get sloppy with that. You know. Perfect uh, example of that's the M14, which had like probably one of the worst MOAs like out there, which is why it didn't last. One of the reasons why it didn't last for very. Long. I mean, there were accurized uh, M14s because they had the M21 right. series, you know, which was a a, a designated fiberglass bedded stock, slash, you know, yeah. sniper rifle. You know, and that one, you know, does shoot well, but that's not every M14. And you know, so. modern shooters have gotten spoiled, right? Like we've gotten spoiled with this, this just entire concept of of sub MOA or MOA, right? Like the idea is I should be able to on six point five. Yeah, it's like every single gun, you know, is not a, a Bergera b14 or whatever you know what i mean like it's just there's this concept it's like i should pick this up and the other thing too that <coughs> excuse me we could have a whole podcast about this as well the reality is is that you are probably never going to be uh, able to beat the capabilities of the rifle that you're handed like most people out there you know i always find it funny there'll be there'll be folks you know when you get in the ARs, they'll be like, I, I'm not going to have a front sight post. It's not as accurate as something with a, you know, with a free float barrel. And it's like, okay, man, like, sure. Like that might make a difference to somebody who shoots a thousand rounds a week. But, uh, you know, you who takes your AR to the range once every six to 18 months and sh you know, shoots six magazines out of, you're not going to tell a difference. So like, maybe we should step down off of our, of our, Oh, what do you call it? High horse there. But anyways, the AK is, it, for what it is, is an extremely accurate and capable platform. I mean, again, th there's a reason why it's hung around for so long in so many conflicts, and it's still out there kicking. Uh, the the matching up of the cartridge, the operating system, uh, you know, Mikhail Kalashnikov really outdid himself. Obviously, there were other people who were involved with some of the modernizations that would come all along later on in the life of the firearm. Um, but the AK is just, what an iconic platform. By the way, if you're looking to get an AK, there are so many options out there. Um, couldn't even name you all of them with the time that we have left. But uh, maybe you're looking to get into something. We here at guns.com have one of the la largest selections of used firearms out there. One of the ways that we do that is through our We Buy Guns program. We have virtualized the entire pawn shop process. So if there's something, maybe you want to trade something in and get yourself, you know, we've got these Romanian CGRs that are uh, actually pretty solid. Um, they're a little over gassed, but... They, they, they're pretty reliable, and the, the parts wear is going some, pretty well. You put some rounds through that, haven't you? Puts, yeah, that, that, that one's got over 3,000 rounds at this point. But uh, anyways, snap a couple pictures of some of the firearms that you have. Submit some information. We'll send you an offer if you like that offer. We'll send you everything you need to ship it to us. We'll pay you with either direct deposit or we'll mail you a check, and then you'll be able to get yourself an AK, right? Because everybody needs an AK. Everybody needs an AR. Everybody needs an AK. It's America. Don't don't feel like you have to be on one side or the other. You know, get both. Like, have fun. Be free. Just enjoy all that freedom that our founding fathers gave us. Don't just get one AK either. You know, you got to get one of all the variants. You know, but uh, sure. <clears throat> I'm gonna cause somebody to get a divorce if I just yeah, keep going with that. Start with the German ones. You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, move move up from there. You know. 
Well, let's uh, talk. No, I mean, they're they're super interesting guns. Let's talk a little bit about the the American AK and the the struggle, struggle bus of the American AK. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is, we I guess we love to hate stuff in a way. I guess that's like an American trait. Um, You know, we kind of get snarky and be like, you know, but you know, we had all these guys who encountered AKs in a negative fashion in like places like Southeast Asia uh, during the sixties and seventies. And some of them made it back here. I mean, that's, that's a fact, you know, look at the, the guys at, at wounded knee, there were a couple of uh, vets there who had uh, AKs at a time where you couldn't get an AK in America. So like the pretty much the only option was uh, that they were, you know, Vietnam bringbacks, you know, from somebody, you know, somebody managed to get it in a duffel bag or a, a crate or a box or something somehow and bring it back. Um, so, I mean, it's, there was definitely some, some hate, hate relationship there with the AK there for a couple of decades, but uh, really, I mean, I, I kind of blame, um, Red Dawn, you know, that, that awesome, you know, 1980s documentary, you know, um, one of my favorite documentaries, right. Right. Um, and, and, and just to get those guns used in that they had to, cause you couldn't get AKs. You can just walk into a gun store and buy something that had the profile of a Kalashnikov. Uh, they used a, a mixture of Mahdi's Egyptian Mahdi's. And uh, a couple of uh, Finnish Valmets in there uh, to kind of pull off the movie, and then that just just blew up, and everybody had to have one. And uh, so, so then you know, China was there, uh, luckily to to kind of send in all those awesome you know early Norinco spikers and stuff that that started coming in, and then that you know got knocked out. Uh, then you know the the Mahdi's came back around again, and. Uh, finally, the the Cold War kind of melted everything in uh, 1989, 1990-ish, and you started seeing, you know, the the real deals coming through. You know, you could get uh, Molots and, and stuff over here. You started to see Arsenals, you know, from Bulgaria, you know, um, just all sorts of stuff. And, like, the floodgates opened, and then all the parts kits came in, and then people started trying to put the parts kits together and sell them, and it got really gnarly there in the early 90s. I'm not going to mention a, a lot of names but there was there was a few different uh american uh importers that uh really just just went ham on those parts yeah. kits in the 90s and it was really really tough going trying to get an american made um ak and and you know even that that expression american made ak in the 1990s wasn't you know because right. obviously they, they just used a bunch of uh imported parts and tried to you know, make it compliant and, you know, added some American this and some, you know, Chinese that or whatever, you know, and, and uh, just wish casted it into existence. And you could get a couple of magazines out of them. And right. then you, Trunyan started getting weird and, you know, and the, the material started, you know, getting getting wobbly, you know. So yeah. it's, Man, uh, those it's, rivets it's been are, an uphill yeah. struggle since then. And I, I think we're, getting close we're getting really close i mean of course you still have people um you got jim fuller and them out there who just do like amazing work like god's work um, out there yeah oh yeah yeah so i mean there's there's little cells around the country where it's like you know just just almost perfect you know like you couldn't ask for something better if it came out of tula or something you know right uh, just, I mean, just beautiful guns and they work well, they, they work with anything and they make them in all sorts of different calibers. Uh, but you know, we're, we're getting a ton of, you know, just really nice, uh, overseas imports coming in as well. And that's something that you just didn't have until the past like 15 years or so. Um, I mean, you I, can, I will all the shade. Well, I was right? going to say, I will say with, with some of the imports, like, especially like you were saying the past 15 years, lot of really nice imports i would say the past year and a half two years uh things have tapered off a little bit because of of the conflict that's going on in europe and and that's caused you know shortages with ammunition ammunition you know prices have spiked both with ak-47s ak-74s so it has in in a way it has you know i don't know what the word is yeah Right. But like you said, we're getting close with, with a lot of American made, made AKs. Uh, there's some companies out there that have had 
struggles getting there, but uh, you know, I think they're they're on the mark and, and they're building quality firearms. You can get them for pretty affordable now too. It's crazy to think back. I when I first got into guns, I don't know. I know you remember this, but uh, the old pawn shop back in Huntsville, Alabama, I used to go to all the time. They would just have racks of guns. And if you wanted an AK, you walked in, and I mean, I think Wazers, when I first started going in there, were $380, $400. Oh, yeah, the $300 like, Wazer, yeah. Yeah, and just, yeah, like I mean. All up the side, no they, wood, look right. like somebody chewed on it. You uh, know? 100%. But they would just have racks of Wazers. I mean, Wazers out the yin-yang. And it was like, if you wanted an AR, you're going to have to fork up, you know, 850 to a thousand dollars. And those were on the wall behind the counter. You know, the AKs, SKSs, that's all just laying out there. You go, you know, F around with the bolt on the AK for the entire time. But, uh, you know, if you want an AR, you got to, you know, and now it's completely flipped. It's like, dude, that AR back there, it's like, I don't know, it costs four hundred dollars to put everything together you know and the ak's have started to get to the other end where it's like yeah you're gonna have to pay probably 800 850 for for a solid ak it's just, it's just crazy how that flipped because yeah, that's that's kind of the entry level on right. a solid AK now, you know? right and it's like if you want i mean shoot if you want something that's that's russian you're gonna pay a lot you know if you want something that's uh even the polish ones and and some of those comblock country ones have gotten expensive over the years uh, obviously, with the with the they, they discovered capitalism fast. Yeah, he, they sure did. You know, the wall came down, and they're like, "Dude, we can make money!" Like, you're kidding. Uh, but with the import ban of the Chinese ones, those have gotten a little scarce, a little a uh, little expensive and collectible as well, which is crazy because we've discussed several firearms before, like another Soviet gun, the the Mosin. Uh, it's not like there's a lack of them in the world. You know, it's not like you're getting an exclusive, like, oh my gosh, you got a Polish AK? Marinko it's like, yeah, only dude. made two of these. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> is a phrase nobody ever said until just keep, now. I keep bumping the table out of excitement, but it's like, yeah, it's like, dude, like, you, you go to these places and they're selling Norinkos, and it's like, yeah, what, $2,500 for this Norinko? And you're just like, dude. Like I'm pretty sure at some point uh, they were probably making 2,500 of those an hour. Uh, you know, like it's incredible, and a lot of it does have to do with you know import laws, conflicts going across uh, the world, uh, and and it is sort of unfortunate. But you gotta, I mean, you gotta have a good AK, right? Like, you can't not have an AK. Or seven. Or seven, you know, yeah. Why not have one from every com block country of manufacture? Like, but like I said, it's it's an incredible platform. Um, everybody should have one. Everybody should shoot one. Uh, ammunition a little bit expensive right now. I would expect that at some point it's going to go back down because again, there's so much of it out there. It might take a little while. I know that there's talks about different companies buying some factories in like Azerbaijan and. Uzbekistan for for some new import stuff uh, but it's a great platform one of the other things that we didn't really talk about a ton we discussed a little bit with the with the Mosin you know there was the popularity of the SKS and the SKS was a big deer hunting rifle um, I'm not saying that you can't hunt deer with an AR because you can but uh, you know the AK is a pretty pretty effective deer rifle as well you know that 30 caliber round will definitely uh, definitely take down a a white tail so it's it's got a lot of applications um you know it's it's a very kind of diverse platform even though it's more expensive than it was it's still fairly inexpensive you know magazines are everywhere uh you know ammunition again it's a little pricey right now but it'll drop uh at some point i think well well talking about uh kalash ammo especially in america um what about like NATO AKs, your five yeah. five six AK. That's true. Yeah. Uh, what's your feelings on that? What's your oh, temperature on that? What's my temperature on that? Uh, so AKs chambered in five five six are an abomination to everything under the sun. Um, I if it's a Valmet seventy six, like I'm fine with that. You know, like that's okay. A Galil, I'm fine with that because like that was the design from the onset. If you have an AK 
you know, I, even if it's like, what, what's the Romanian, uh, it's like the 1053 or something like, I don't remember they're in, it's in the movie. Uh, I don't know why I know this. It's in the movie Sahara, uh, with McConaughey. With McConaughey. Yeah. It's the five, you know, five, I, six, I eight, love eight. five Kessler books, man. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I but mean, anyways, course, I don't know if he wrote like half of them, but, you know, but, and we may get sued by five Kessler's <laughs> estate over that. But. I hate Five five six AKs. Uh, that's a personal thing. It, I love AKs. I love. Well, I mean, it's ballistically five, four, similar five. to a five four five. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> why the hate? Yeah, you know? I don't know, man. It's just it's like two things that are not supposed to go together, and they're together. Like I don't like five five six chambered AKs, and I don't like seven six two by three nine chambered ARs. It's just it's well, wrong. I can, I can I can agree with you on the latter. Like, yeah. Well because those magazines never work. No, they never I work. Care. I mean everybody always says, oh look at this AR and seven point six two. Like well, let's take it to the range, you know? And I've it's been, like, oh this is this is fun for six rounds, you know? <laughs> I, I legit remember being at the range back in Alabama years ago and a guy had, you know, an an AR mutant in 762 and he must have had like 15 light primer strikes and he gives them to me he's like I don't think these rounds work and I threw them in my AK and just bang 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 you know no no problem whatsoever but uh look it's America do what you want if you want to have an, an AR mutant or an AK mutant or whatever you want to do that's fine just know that God it judges you know what i mean and so do i so uh yeah i, I don't i don't do five five six ak's i don't do uh which i don't know i could i could say this i'm i'm still waiting it's been four years four years ago uh palmetto state released the krinkov or teased the krinkov i brought this up multiple times this, i talked to my therapist about this at least five five six now though, months, baby. Yeah, it's, in, it's in, in five five six and i'm still waiting for five four five and so. that's an ammo thing i'm sure if five yeah. four five was around more they, they would have dropped that one first 100 you know? but yeah no i mean you're yeah. right though there there are a ton of options i believe i don't know if they're available yet but I believe companies like Palmetto are planning on releasing the rifle in 300 blackout with adjustable gas systems. I think that's one of the AK variants that they're working on now. So you can get you can get the the rifle in all kinds of different platforms. You can get 22s out there and train. Um, there's a ton of nine millimeter AKs out there. Whether it's a an actual AK kind of converted down to nine millimeter or the the Vityev, you know nine millimeter kind of PCCs. There's that out there uh but the ak and and that goes to the diversity of the platform the platform has been made to fit all of these different capabilities these different calibers um it, it just it keeps going it keeps giving and, and everybody keeps kind of innovating into it um you know you got the what's uh zinico right that makes the the furniture uh that you i mean that stuff's gold now because it's definitely not coming in the u.s right now but uh there's there's even the modern lots AK. Of people, yeah. There's lots of people in that space. I mean, we oh, yeah. I hung out at, at CanCon in Georgia with the uh Kalashnikov USA guys and uh you know, they're they're bringing in all sorts of stuff. I'm sorry, not bringing in, but bringing to the market a lot of American made uh stuff. I mean, they they've got Absolutely. the machinery to actually make their own uh Vitots magazines. And they've mm -hmm. been making a ton of them and they dropped the price on them. They were like 50 bucks when they came out and they were like 30 bucks, you know. Uh, cause they just keep making so many of them and they work, you know, I saw them on the range, people just like, just melting down those guns, you know, and it's, you know, due to import restrictions and the fact that AK USA is, is, is not AK, you know, right, not, right. you know, you know it's itself, you know, they just kind of have the name at this point. Um, there's, there's really no crossover. It's not like they're bringing in shiploads of stuff and, and, you know, turn it around and, and add 922 compliant parts and sending them out. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. So you're uh, you're seeing a lot of actual born in America uh, collage floating around. Centuries uh, had several different generations of them. Uh, you know, of course, some of them have more imported parts than others. Uh, they've got you know, as American-made AKs that they're they're really really working hard on. Uh, everybody knows 
uh, PSA, they're doing their stuff. Uh, PSA has been the same thing with them. Their first AKs when they came out were like, ah, oh, give me away from this, you know, but now, you know, you kind of swerve and you're like, oh, let me shoot that because uh, the, the quality and stuff have, have really gone up in the past several years. Uh, you've got Riley out there. I mean, there's lots of different yeah. uh, people. And, and then you know, don't, don't even send me out on this tangent, but of course, uh, you've got AK adjacent designs like the Galil, you know, and all that stuff, you know, it's, and, and I love a Galil, you know, I, For I sure. personally, you know, favor a Galil. I've got several different SAR builds and stuff, you know, you're welcome um, for that 50 round bag, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> There's a story behind that that we'll get into on a, maybe another podcast about, uh, traveling with magazines, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, lots, no. of, lots of fun but you know i mean it's it's there's really no reason not to just like embrace the collage and, and just just go crazy with it you know and it's actually it's become a cultural thing at this point you know like i said there's all these different ak events like you know collage bash and then collage nikon and all that stuff you know yeah. where people just red. go and they nerd out over all the different what's the know, one out in arizona red uh red october red that's, october that's, yeah, that's, yeah 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 it's huge well, they, they had issues, but they're coming back. So yeah. anyway, or was, or was that Kalashnikov? Anyway, but there, there's, there's, like I said, there's a whole culture of that's embraced the AK. Um, and the point the is, reason, AKs are awesome, and you should oh, yeah. get one. Yeah, like, and I'm not even going to get into what my favorite AK in my collection is because it's it's like a groan fest for a lot of people. Um, and say, uh, okay, well, I guess I'm yeah, I was gonna say, you gotta go, you can't just tease that, you can't, you can't just tease it and be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but you know, and I'm not even an AK guy, but I've got a few of them, and I've had several of them over the years. But my, my current favorite is a, a, a Zastava, and right there, I just lost half of the audience, yeah, you know, because yeah. Zastava is not a real awesome. AK, people, yeah, <laughs> people just absolutely love Zastava, or they absolutely do not love Zastava, you know, it's there's no middle ground with, with uh. Serbian slash Hugo uh, uh, Kalash, but uh, it's a it's a Zastava M85 uh, pistol that I had SBR'd, and I've got a, a fold and triangular stock on it, and I, I just love it. And it's it's wait a it's second, a, it's an, it's an, five, it's an five, M85. Six. Yeah, I was just say we're not talking anymore. Like we're done. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's five, it's five five six. I know it's a fight on site. But, fight on site right um, now. Yeah, it's a it, but and it's it's the one that has the adapter well on it to where it takes uh, uh, AR mags. And it works, and I love it, and it's great. And they only imported them, uh, Century imported them real briefly, and they, they haven't imported them anymore, and Zastra is doing their own thing in South America. Uh, so possibly, you know, they may turn around and do it again. I, I talked to the people over there at Zastra, both at uh, IWA in Germany and SHOT Show and stuff, and I'm like, come on, man, can, can I get a 556 uh, uh, AK? And, uh, you know, na uh, runs a NATO, you know, uh, magazine. And they're like, no, no. I'm going to show you, for those of you who don't know, the easiest way to tell the difference between uh, Yugo, Serbian AK, and, you know, kind of a com block AK. And we talked about how there's all these minor variants, but normal AKs have like two air slots or cooling slots on the, on the handguard. And all those Zastavas have three, and the handguards are not interchangeable. So no, they're not. That was one of those things where I was like, nah, this is ours now. We'll do our thing with it, uh, which is a, a fairly common thing. Um, I love, you know, if we're going to talk about my favorite AK, and again, we're going to have to get into, if we're going 545, five, or not 545, five, if we're going 762 by 39, it's probably... I don't know, man. This is probably my my Wazer under folder. Um, un, not comfortable to shoot necessarily, but there's just something about the under folder AK that is Those awesome. It's, oh, they they do. I mean, suck. they're they're money. You look like but a pimp anytime you yes, pull it out. hundred percent, hundred percent. But uh, I mean, like you should get out of a Lada and have like a tracksuit on. And, oh my God. <laughs> yes, yeah. like if you hold it, it's weird because I go to the range and I get like a proper stance and everything, and I take it aim, and as soon as I pull the trigger, I just automatically slav squat. Like it's nuts. Like there's nothing I can do to stop it. You know what I mean? Like crazy. But uh, no, I'm a I'm a whore for five four five. So I love 
anything 74 you know i've got a, a polish tantal which is probably one of my favorites but anyways tantals are sweet man i've tantals never run across sweet. a tantal i've been like well that's trash you no know, the polish polish guns in general poland makes really good firearms um there's actually a, another you know this is a side tangent where we got to probably wrap up here soon but i've got a radom vis nine millimeter that shoots lights out man i mean that, that gun and it's a wartime gun too, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of wiggly when you shake it, but it that Joker will just nail anything you point it at, you know. I mean, Absolutely. Accurate. So, so one I, of the areas where the AK did not necessarily gain the traction, where the Soviets were hoping it would gain traction, is a nation that you recently visited, the old Czechoslovakia, and there was a huge argument because the the Czechs. And as they should, they make incredible firearms. I mean, they really do. Uh, but they held themselves pretty high in like what they thought of what they made and their ideas on things, and then the Soviet ideas on things. Yeah, they, they ran and, the VZ fifty eight. You know, yeah, totally well, different animal. Even before that, there was the huge argument where the the checks were like, uh, seven six two by three nine kind of sucks, but the seven six two by forty five way better and uh with the cz or the vz 52 i think or whatever it was um and that's that's a whole nother thing you yeah, know they the, never adopted the sks yeah know? they never they never adopted, adopted the sks never adopted better never adopted the uh the ak-47 or the akm variant you know they were just like yeah we uh we make things better and uh we're gonna go with our design not yours and, and the, you know the Russians had Tokarevs and Makarovs and stuff, and still they were you know CZ. I mean the, the Czechs were like, "Have you heard of CZ?" Yeah, yeah, and, uh, right. So. Uh, it's also funny too because they never adopted the SKS, but from an operating system, the VZ58 is basically a magazine-fed SKS. Like, it's that so it's that tap system, isn't it? Yeah, like. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't know. That's a fun little AK anecdote. Um, but that is. AKs. I mean, we could keep talking for hours about how friggin' cool AKs are, but we do have time constraints. Um, but thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of Two Guys, One Gun, uh, brought to you by Guns.com. Uh, if you're looking for a good AK, there's no better place to go check out than Guns.com. Um, you know, you don't only find things that we have from our warehouse, but there are thousands of FFLs and small businesses that we're trying to support across the United States. So if you're on the hunt for an AK, be sure to check us out. Thank you again, and we will catch you on the next episode.